Hello, um, today I'm going to talk about logistic regression and um, k-nearest labors. Uh, it's basically uh, all these kind of um, models is used for classification, uh, which is non-parametric, which is uh, kind of get the possibility of, you know, um, decisions, either this, this decision or that decision, um, and, um, you know, predict what, which decision is more um, portable. Um, so the first thing is logistic uh, model. Basically, um, like in this image, basically that's all like this. Like all the points is either zero or one, right? So, um, so in, eventually, what you will get is a curved line. Just like predict the possibility. Like here, if um, if x is larger than here is very possible it's gonna be one okay uh, and here is very possible it's gonna be zero so um, and the reason we call it logistic is because they will fit you know they will fit the one and zeros to another dimension um, which are another service and then uh, they're not zero one anymore but you know they will change the scale of the y-axis and the other important thing is logistic regression is actually linear um, let me change to this one um, you will see here that's how we do the logistic you know um, transformation and you will see it's like a lock model okay if like this kind of shape of line okay if if the data doesn't fit this form um, you know, then we we'll, it's not good. Okay, um, it will not fit fit it. So you, you better, f um, you know, the data better feel like, you know, um, the lock shape. Okay, that's what we do. Which means, you know, data a lot of data. If it's one, um, if it's one, a lot of data are gonna be here, and a lot of data are gonna be here, and uh, here is not much, and here not much. Okay, so you are big chunk here, big chunk here. So that's, um, if that's the case, logistic model is really good. Um, the other one is about the k-nearest. K-nearest is actually really more flexible. It can uh, find out, you know, the um, what's the group one point belong to. For example, if I, there's a point here, then they will find the number of the most closest, you know, labors, okay? So in this case, um, like the really close if um, let's say we want to find the five, five labors right and uh, these three labors are the most closest to this point so this point belong to you know just belong to the um, the red group okay it's like you know either way like find the most closest region of that okay um, it's really um, ob obvious to find okay um, because you know in this boundary right if the points on this boundary is more close to this points than the other points right so um, that's that's the integration of it so uh, back to the code again I uh, want to import lumpy um, mat, matplotlib and import the data set and the data set we have is basically two one is the age one is the salary and the dependent variable is purchased whether or not they purchased the car okay and uh, we just um, you know use Skyline cross validation you know import just to split the training set and you know test that test that so the training set um, you know X training set we have you know this is the salary and this is like the age um, so the white set, white training set is just uh, the result of whether or not they buy. Okay, and uh, for all th for all the classification model, we need to scale it. Okay, because because this is a possibility and uh, um, is based on you know it's based on uh, all the dependent variables zero one zero one. Okay. Um, you know, uh, and all the and if these functions doesn't have um, scaling embedded in the algorithm, 
So we need to scale them. Okay. So just uh, open the scaling. Use the standard scaler, and just once you create a scaler, and then just use the scaler to all the X. Uh, we don't have to do the for the Y uh, categorical uh, because you know it's categorical. If Y is dependent variable, which is a Y, it's contiguous. We need to scale. Okay. So let's just scale. So once we finish scale, you know we have all the data set fit. So this is train again, so it's all scaled, right? Um, and we just, you know, we just uh, fit the model in there, okay? Um, for logistic regression, we need to use linear model logistic regression. Um, once one thing remember is actually linear model, okay? Uh, logistic regression, right? Because we have preset. Uh, because we have like the logic, logic model down there, right? Um, and we create the classifier. And the one thing important thing is the random state. When you set up random state, so we can make sure every time um, we create the same results. Okay, um, it's like a random seat. Okay, we don't like if we change the x train, we run again. You will, you know, you will, you will. You will be the same algorithm, same settings, okay? Um, in terms of, because uh, there's some randomness in here, right? And then we just classify and feed them. Uh, once we feed the feed the data, so uh, the classifier ready to predict, you know, based on the data we feed it. So, um, and then we can make a prediction. So let's say the Y prediction. Then we can predict, you know, this test set, you know, X test, right? The test site set. Um, and the other new thing is we can um, evaluate the results, okay? Um, since this is more, um, it's hard to pr plot, this is more like a, um, functions, right? Um, you know, categorical, right? So you just print it, then they will get a, what, we, what they call confusion matrix. So let's just open it up. So what this means is, you know, if if you know in the in the um in in the in the real life is zero and then the prediction is zero also uh which means there is ninety three no sixty three that's correct okay which and seven is wrong okay and in the reality is one and in the prediction is one which means they made um twenty five that is correct and five that was wrong okay so basically that's what it was um, so you will know you know what which one is more uh, accurate okay I think um, zero is more accurate than you know predict predict one okay um, so that's this and uh, for k nearest we you know it's basically the same we just use different uh, labels um, you know model so this one we use neighbors we use K neighbors classifier and uh, important one important thing is there are different ways to classify okay um, but Euclidean distance is the best one so you just remember this settings which is metric and P equals 2 okay that means Euclidean distance just find it you know remember them um, just like this okay find a small the best distance down there okay and the number of neighbors is the size of the point to find their neighbors, okay? Um, five is pretty good. Um, if it's really, really small, they will, you know, um, you may get multiple, a lot of uh, classes, right? So five is good. And um, um, then we just, we create a classifier, we feed the classifier to data, and then we make a prediction. So, you know, that's the same process, kind of. Um, and we make, we can make predictions in here. And we could calculate the SM, the CM, the confusion model. So you can see here, it's actually this one did a better job. Uh, it's like 64, that's right, and 29, that's right, and once, okay. Um, and this code is, um, is kind of complex, but it's a way to look at uh, the performance of the classifier, okay, um, you know, visually, okay. Um, for example, let's just run it. Yeah, let's just let me just run it. Um, so 
So what this do is just show you how the model um, classify the training data. Okay. Um, so if this is training data, um, you know they will build this boundary, and all the data in this side is zero, and the other side is one, which is not purchase. And here is purchase. Okay, this is how they do it. Uh, for this piece of code, the only thing you need to change is this x stat and y stat. Okay, it, which is x train and y train. X train is like. Um, you know the model, uh, the input of the model, independent variable of the model, and one train is the uh, dependent variable in reality. Okay, um, basically that's the first thing you need to do. And the other thing you need to want to change is this classifier. Um, right now we are at um, k nearest neighbor, so we use the k nearest neighbor classifier. See here, we use the classifier we created here. Uh, if we want to try to look at the logistic one, we just you know change the classifier here. Uh, actually, we can do it right now. Let's change the classifier down here, and let's run. It. Then see here, that's just like this straight line. Okay, that's the folder. Um, the other thing you want to change is the title. You know, you want to look at the title to let people. Um, Understand what this map mean and the labels x label y label things like that. Okay, so just run it. You know, change the label. So it's just a way to visualize uh, how get how uh, your model predict you know the boundaries. Okay, um, the same thing with the tests. You know, you can look at the test how they do it. Do it so. Um, usually, you just run the training sets. That's per. Yeah, probably enough. Okay, so that's this for today. I'll see you next time.